Hi guys, it's Sarah Taylor. This is a 24 by 36 inch Dutch pour called Lucy. And let's start with colors. That's a Payne's Gray by Arteza. And these are all mixed with my pouring medium, um, except for the uh, this light color is a little bit different. It's uh, This is Modern Masters Iridescent Pearl. And I mixed in um, a little bit of Apple Barrel white paint and which is funny, but it works really well for Dutch pours for some reason, um, and also satin enamel. That's just kind of a, uh, a nice warm brown Grumbacher burnt umber with a bit of Mars black. And this is that same paint I've been playing with a lot. It's such a pretty mixture. It's Charvin Indigo mixed with Jenkins Green and Prussian Blue by Golden Fluid. And then that's a a Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold. And I'll tell you more about my pouring medium here in just a minute. So the uh, metallics I do keep a bit thicker, that, that one in particular. Um, and then this is Golden Fluid, Nickel Azo Gold and Iridescent Gold mixed together. Just, I didn't want it to be too orange. And so everything's pretty thin. Um, it's about 70% Floetrol to, that's uh, golden high flow, iridescent gold. So about 70% Floetrol to about 30% pouring medium. In this case, it's Artist Loft pouring medium. And then the, uh, the satin enamel that I put into that, that lighter color, I, it made it a little thicker, so I did add extra pouring medium. So it was probably about a 50-50 mix between pouring medium and Floetrol on my white mixture. And I'm just going back to, this is, you know, when I first started doing fluid art, I really fell in love with the Dutch pour, and I did a lot of Dutch pour when I, um, a couple years ago when I first started. And I really like the split like this. Um, and for me, the, you know, the real trick to a Dutch pour, I would say, I kind of showed you the consistency of my paints, however, I, uh, I bring everything down with water to a, you know, just a really, really fluid consistency. And I like kind of a dirtier Dutch pour. I, I, I don't like them real neat and tidy. Um, I like to have a lot of movement and bring you know, especially on a split, I like to bring a lot of the opposing color up into the large part of the canvas and just, you know, kind of like, I don't want to say explosion of color because I actually use very little color. Um, and I started with the burnt umber and then that indigo mixture. And then I'm just doing the, uh, you know, I'm being pretty, pretty uh, sparing because I, I find if I use, if I just pour a huge thick line, you know, the color ends up more than what I, what I want. I, I like the negative space um, and kind of muted and really I'm going for something fairly sophisticated here and it's, uh, it's gonna be a piece for a, kind of an upscale salon um, and she's pretty like, kind of femme but also modern and edgy so this was where I went in my head and then Sarah Mack posted a really pretty little Dutch pour a couple days ago and it gave me the little kick I was like yes that's that's what I should do for this space so um, yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and pour um, like a flow paint on either side of my colors let me talk a little bit more about what I'm doing here though. So that's the Nickel Azo by Golden Fluid. And that Nickel Azo, when you put it right next to the 24 karat gold, it's really, really pretty. Uh, it just kind of, when they mix together and make cells, it just gives this kind of illuminating feel. Um, they, those two paints work really nicely together. And so we've kind of, I kind of built it up, dark paint up to light paint. So the burnt umber, the indigo, the gold paint. And now I squirted two nice lines of golden, ear, golden high flow across the top. And anybody that's worked with it knows that it's really a special, beautiful type of paint. So hoping for some pretty effects with that as well. 
And then I'm just torching everything out, make sure there's no air bubbles, of course. You don't want little things popping up and causing little dots when you're, after you're done blowing. And most artists, I think most people that do Dutch pour, I know, I, you know, I first saw Rinsky, Duna, um, do, oh, I forgot. So that um, is Amsterdam mix, titanium white, and I just put one line of it along where the white, where the kind of gray white paint meets the gold. So I was just hoping for a little bit of lacing, a little bit of extra zhuzh <laughs> with that Amsterdam mix, which I do get. It's, it actually was very effective. So I put the paints gray down on one side. And what this does, I was saying what Rinsky, um, you know, she always puddles around her her paints before she does a Dutch blow blowout, and um, I I like the what it does. Not everybody does this. Uh, I think some people do this, but but they don't blow back over the paint. And I like to give a nice extender. What this does is it really helps the paint to move. Um, if you just started blowing those colors out onto the base coat, you're not going to get a whole lot of really good organic movement from the paint. So you put it on either side, and then I'm gonna take a blow dryer and kind of blow it over the top, and then go from there. And I hope you guys enjoy. Um, please subscribe, and uh, I ordered some stuff, so I, I'm gonna do a, um, a giveaway actually on my next video because I, I gave it some thought and ordered some things. And uh, yeah, so that'll be coming soon. Um, yeah, and just uh, like and subscribe. I'm on Instagram as well at sarahtaylor.modernart. And I just launched a website, stmodernart.com. Cheers, you guys. Have a, have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And take great care. All right. Talk to you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.